now the question can be asked that if a line is given to me, I can uniquely determine the slope. But if a slope is given to me, can I uniquely determine a line? That is the next question that I will put up. In, in essence, the question asks, can there be many lines with same slope? The answer can be seen in this uh, GIF image. If you look at this image closely, what I would, uh, what we have done is, we have fixed one line, we have fixed this line, this line is fixed and we know how to compute the slope of this line, we have a, it will be minus 1, minus 1 will be the slope of this line based on the coordinates. Now, the line, the blue line that is revolving around is actually having the same inclination as the orange line. Now, the orange line and blue line have the same inclination that means tan of them, a tan of those inclinations will be same, will match and hence there can be infinitely many parallel lines which have a same slope. So, the answer to this question, can slope of a line uniquely determine a line? The answer is no. You cannot uniquely determine a line given the slope of a line or the inclination of the line. Okay. Now, why do we study the concept of slope or whatever we studied, how it is helpful? The helpfulness of this concept is just what we discussed in this graphical image. What we are seeing is if the inclinations are same, the line better be parallel. So, for parallel lines, I can use this concept and derive a condition of slope. Similarly, I can do by rotating them by 90 degrees, that means, I we can consider the perpendicular lines and I can consider general two lines intersecting each other and see what condition I can derive based on the slope. So, I want to explore the, condi the usefulness of slope. So, to explore this, I will first figure out the condition for parallel lines and I will figure out the condition for perpendicular lines. In due course, we will find the relation between slopes of two lines and their intersection and their angles of intersection. Okay. This is what we will do in next few minutes. So, let us go to the next characterization of parallel lines via slope. Now, as you can see in this image, there are two parallel lines, they have same inclination, but they are not unique, that is what we figured out. So, if I play this video, you can see again the similar, uh, this is similar to what we have seen in the last video. So, I have something which is moving around and there can be infinitely many lines. What remains constant is the inclination, the inclination is same if I have parallel lines. So, let us try to see whether we can derive something. So, let to put it in a proper context, let L1 and L2, let orange line be L1 and the blue line be L2, be two non-vertical lines. Why non-vertical lines? Vertical lines have angle of 90 degrees for which the concept of slope is undefined. Inclination 90 degrees for which the concept of slope is undefined. So, uh, what I need is non-vertical lines. So, consider two non-vertical lines with slopes m1 and m2. Given the slopes, there are inclinations alpha and beta respectively. Now, if you have been given that L1 is parallel to L2, then alpha is equal to beta. Inclinations are same, that is what we have seen in the figure and that is what we discussed in the last slide also. So, if alpha is equal to beta, na then naturally tan alpha is equal to tan beta. Once tan alpha is equal to tan beta, what is tan alpha? It is the slope of line L1 that is M1 and tan beta is the slope of line L2 which is M2. Therefore, clearly the slopes are equal, M1 is equal to M2. 
the converse that is assume that if the slopes are equal then tan alpha is equal to tan beta by definition. Now tan alpha is equal to tan beta does that imply alpha is equal to beta in our case because we are restricting the inclinations to vary from 0 to 180 degrees the value of tan is uniquely determined and therefore because alpha and beta lie in 0 to 180 degrees alpha is equal to beta which resolves the problem that means their inclinations are same that means the two lines are parallel. So, L1 is parallel to L2. So, what is a characterization of parallel lines that means if I want to say two non vertical lines L1 and L2 are parallel then it suffices to check whether their slopes are equal or not. If they are parallel then the slopes better be equal and if the slopes are equal then we have parallel lines. Okay. Now similar characterization we are searching for in perpendicular lines. So let us go and try to figure out this characterization for perpendicular lines. Let us try to visualize what are the perpendicular lines. So, here are two perpendicular lines one L1 and L2. Let us take uh, the orange line as L1 and blue line as L2. So, L1 will have slope M1, L2 will have slope M2, angle of incl uh, inclination of L1 is alpha then inclination of beta if it is perpendicular to line L1 is 90 plus alpha which is beta. And then you, you may play with the tans of it uh, tangent uh, function of it and you can get something which is very interesting. So, let us try to figure out what is that interesting thing that we are getting. So, to put it formally let L1 and L2 be two non vertical lines because I cannot work with vertical lines theta equal to 90 degrees the slope concept of slope is not defined with slopes m1 m2 inclinations alpha and beta respectively no problem in this. If L1 is perpendicular to L2 as the case as is the case in the figure I have beta is equal to 90 plus alpha. So, if I want to figure out the relation between the slopes of L1 and L2 then it is a good idea to take tangent of beta. So, let us take that. So, tan beta is tan of 90 plus alpha correct, but tan 90 plus alpha if you use that simple formula that is available to you is minus cot alpha which also can be written as minus 1 by tan alpha. But what is tan alpha? Tan beta is the slope of a line L2 which is M2 and tan alpha is a slope of a line L1 which is M1. So, M what just what we have just now derived is M2 is equal to minus 1 upon M1 or M1 into M2 is equal to minus 1. That means, if you take two slopes if you take slopes of two lines take a product of them and if you get the quantity to be equal to minus 1 that means you have got a perpendicular lines right. But right now we have not proved that result what we have proved just now is if L1 is perpendicular to L2 then the product of the slopes better be minus 1. Now I want to prove if the product of the slopes is minus 1 then the lines are perpendicular. How will I go about this? Exactly the way we went for parallel lines. So, m1 into m2 is minus 1, then I obviously know tan alpha into tan beta is equal to minus 1. That means tan beta will be equal to minus 1 upon tan alpha or tan alpha is equal to minus of cot beta. But what is minus of cot beta? tan of 90 plus beta or either it will be this way or it will be the other way. So, 90 minus beta 
So, minus cot beta is either 90 plus beta or 90 minus beta. In any case, the difference between alpha and beta is 90 degrees. Therefore, L1 is perpendicular to L2. Hence, we have proved a characterization that if two non vertical lines are perpendicular to each other, then the product of their slopes is equal to minus 1 which can be written in this form. Two non vertical lines L1 and L2 are perpendicular if and only if M1 into M2 is equal to minus 1 or you can verbally write product of their slopes is equal to minus 1. So, this is the characterization of the lines via slope, perpendicular lines via slope. So, we have what we have seen so far is the characterization of lines characterization of parallel lines by uh, by slope and characterization of perpendicular lines via slope. What if they are not parallel or perpendicular and they intersect just like that? Right? If they are not parallel, then they better intersect each other. Right? So, in general, if I want to have an intersection of two lines and I know the slopes of those two lines, can I talk about the angle of intersection of these two lines? The answer is yes. So, here is the relation between the angle, uh, relation of angles between the two lines and their slopes. So, what I want to say, if once I show the clear, uh, figure, it will be clear. As of now, let us understand, I have two non-vertical lines with slopes m1 and m2, inclinations alpha1 and alpha2 respectively and L1 and L2 intersect each other, they are not parallel. So, they will intersect somehow and they are not perpendicular also. So, they intersect in angles phi and theta are the adjacent angles that are formed by L1 and L2. If they intersect in a perpendicular manner, the adjacent angles will be 90 degrees each. So, that is not an interesting case because we have resolved that case. So, now if they intersect at any angle, then this figure will look like this. Let us first understand this figure. So, there are two lines L1 and L2. There are two lines L1 and L2. So, L1 has angle of incline, uh, inclination alpha 1, L2 has inclination alpha 2. These two lines intersect over here near phi comma phi, uh, near the y axis phi, y coordinate phi and they have two angles one is theta, another one is phi. So, these two angles are adjacent angles. Right? What can you say about the angle theta that is formed? As you can see, the angle alpha 2 is obtuse and alpha 1 is slight acute. So, the angle theta is actually alpha 2 minus alpha 1 provided alpha 1 and alpha 2 are not equal to 90 degrees. Why? Because I cannot consider vertical lines as simple as that. So, the angle is 90 not equal to 90 degrees, theta is alpha 2 minus alpha 1. So, if I want to talk about slopes of uh, in terms of slopes of these lines, I better take tangent function and apply it to the angle theta. So, let me do it. So, tan theta will be equal to tan of alpha 2 minus alpha 1. Take a standard trigonometric formula of tan alpha 2 minus alpha 1, you will get tan alpha 2 minus tan alpha 1 upon 1 plus tan alpha 1 tan alpha 2. But what is tan alpha 2? Tan alpha 2 is nothing but the slope of line L2 which is M2 and tan alpha 1 is slope of line L1 which is M1. Therefore, this the answer to this is M2 minus M1 upon 1 plus M1 M2. Okay. So, I know what is tan theta. Now, you can look at the angle phi which is 180 minus theta. So, I can similarly derive a relationship for tan phi which is tan of 180 minus theta. We have already seen this is minus of tan theta. 
so that m2 minus m1 will be swapped to m1 minus m2 denominator remains the same the condition m1 m2 not equal to minus 1 remains the same because they should not be perpendicular in this case we have figured out what is the relation of tan of that angle with respect to the slopes of the lines so this finishes our discussion on two lines now uh, another interesting question that comes is what if the three points are collinear then how will the slopes are interpreted imagine three points are collinear then what happens is their slopes must be equal because they are all lying on the same line right and there is one common point so if a b c are collinear slope of a b is equal to slope of b c and therefore all of them must be collinear so if there is any common point in between those two uh, those three points hmm, then the slopes if the slopes are equal the points are collinear that is called the relation of collinearity using slopes okay that's all for today